This week on the Computer Chronicles, the best of Comdex. This is the amazing new web pad from Cyrix, a new wireless appliance for surfing the web. Forget learning a foreign language, this new software from Language Force can speak French for you. Tired of dragging that laptop to the library? This is the C Pen. It'll take notes for you and then dump them into your computer. And finally, a way to make better home movies on your PC. Consumer convergence has arrived with Avid Cinema for Windows. Plus, my pick of the week, a new piece of internet software that will make the virtual world a little more real. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWiz for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Comdex is the country's biggest computer trade show. The fall edition, held in Las Vegas each year, brings more than 2,000 exhibitors into town and introduces nearly 10,000 new technology products more than anyone can handle. So we try to hone down that list to the few really impressive new technologies that seem to stand out from the rest. You can categorize the best new computer products this year into three categories, video computer convergence, the internet, and language handling. And we'll begin with the internet product, starting out with the amazing web pad from Cyrix. Now, Cyrix, you're a chip company, but you guys have a prototype now using your chip, I assume. Yes, of course. Uh, called the web pad. And this is what everybody at Comdex was talking about, because we're all looking, what's really new? What's cool? And they say, have you seen the web pad at Cyrix? So give us, first of all, a kind of physical tour of what this thing is. Well, I think the most important thing about it is that it's wireless. As you can see, there are no connectors or wires whatsoever. It's a wireless internet terminal. In fact, we are live online right now. This is your Cyrix website, and we'll play around with it a second. So mm -hmm. I should have one of those hoops the magician has and show there's no wires anywhere Absolutely. here. Absolutely. We're, you know, just run a hoop right over okay. it. Okay, and, um, and just what's in the box here? Now, I know this is just a prototype. We should point that mm -hmm. out so it's not finished yet. Mm -hmm. But you plan a USB port over here so I could add peripherals to it? Yes, that'll be an option for customers, uh, for so PC printer, manufacturers. So a printer, storage, or whatever? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, mm -hmm. and then what are the buttons we have over here? Um, well, before we get to the buttons, we okay. uh, we have a, a 10.4 inch color active matrix display, which is very high and performance. A touch screen. And it's a this touch is how screen. I interact with the website. Absolutely. Up here we have the on off button. This toggles the uh, the keyboard, keyboard okay. in or out. Um, these two uh, keys are user configurable essentially, and it looks this like a one. Joystick or cursor control. Yeah, this thing. one is essentially a cursor or scroll bar. Right, and so you have a little pilot type pen that you would actually use this with. Absolutely. All right, so show us how you would actually navigate. So I'm, I could just be at home, anywhere, watching TV and have this in my lap, and I'm watching the football game, and the guy says, "Check out NFL.com," and I say, "Sure," and I can do it while I'm watching TV. Then. Huh? Absolutely. Or you, you could be in the kitchen. You could be uh, out lounging in a lounge chair so outside, any, okay. anywhere in or around. So the if home. I want to, I want to surf the web. How do I do this? Well, let's see if we can find that uh, NFL.com site that you were referring to. Okay, and there here we are. it is. And uh, let me guess, you're a San Francisco a 49ers, 49ers fan. fan. Not a bad okay. idea. So we'll just. Uh, so uh, you touch on the that. screen and you move your cursor there and you activate it that way. And huh? we could see that uh, the 49ers are actually a game and a half behind the Falcons. Yeah, unfortunately, and you could, right? You, you could uh, you could check that the next game that they're playing. So is any with of the, the normal Giants. stuff I would do using my mouse and cursor and clicking, I could do with the pen on the touch screen here. It essentially gives you an experience on the internet equivalent to what you get on a personal computer sitting at a desk. All right, now pop up the keyboard a second. The first question is, hey, wait a minute, how do I enter a URL? How do I do email, etc. Yeah, and essentially what you would do is you'd pop up the keyboard and you. And I just type away as I might on on a Palm Pilot keyboard or something. Exactly, and there you can highlight it and you could just type okay. away. And there's even a uh, dot com button, so you don't. Have to enter all those each letters. Time. Yeah. All right. I see you have speakers built in. Is that right? So there'll be audio capability. That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how is this working? I have this at home now. I mean, how is it connected to the internet? What's the connection? Well, essentially, today um, the primary connection to the internet is through a 56k modem. Right. So, so this particular prototype is interfacing through a card in a PC 
through a 56K modem. As we're using it now. That's correct. So and I do need a PC right now. Yes, today, yes. But I mean, the plan could be, this could be, I assume, just like a cordless phone at home, right? Plugged into a, a phone base? That's, that's the ideal model, is there would be a phone base that would have your um, connection, whether it's a 56K modem or mm -hmm. even a higher speed a DSL or cable modem type connection. And you would simply um, interface to it just like you would with a, uh, a cordless phone. Okay, can I hold this a second? Just yes, so of course. So I would normally just kind of sit here like this, and this is kind of cool, and just play around, again, watching TV or sitting at the kitchen table, say, so, oh, let's do this. I can get rid of that keyboard, et cetera. Now, uh, w now this is a prototype. Uh, you guys don't make computers. You're, you're a chip company. You're going to OEM this out, I take it, to other people? Yes, that's correct. When could we plan to think that we're going to actually see a product like this? Um, well, since we launched so uh, powerfully at Comdex, we are now uh, swamped by customers, and we expect that there will be a number of companies launching products based on this reference design in 1999. And any idea what the price point would be for this? Well, it's kind of hard to say. There are a variety of potential models. Um, it could come out at, say, five or $600, or it could be a subsidized model, in which case it might be uh, quite a bit less expensive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, suppose you're on the net, but you're chatting with someone from France, and they only speak French. Not much of a chat. Well, at Comdex, there was a great new solution to that problem called Language 2000. Lane, this is your company. Language Force is the company. Uh, we've seen speech recognition products before. We've seen uh, text translation programs before. You've basically brought these two together. Is that the idea between? between That's them? the idea. Yes, what we've done is that now with uh, speech recognition technology, and the advent of more improved um, translation technology, we can actually bring the two together and make a practical tool for people to communicate in other languages. All right, now how would I really use this? I just gave the web example. Is that a normal case of how I might use something like Language 2000? Absolutely. Let's say you want to go to a French website. Well, we have on here what's known as the Instant Web Translator. Okay. You can go to, say, a French website. You don't understand French, but go in there, and the Instant Web Translator will translate your French text into English and speak it back to you in English. So your software kind of reads the text in the foreign language, translates it into my language. And more than just French, I assume you do other languages? Exactly. We have German, we have Spanish, and also Russian. All right. And on the chat, online voice chat, same idea? Same idea. You can go to, a say, a French chat line. We supply 10 or 20 of the top most popular French chat lines. Uh -huh. You can go in and then speak in English through your microphone. Literally speak, not just type. Literally speak in English. It will go into the chat room, translate into French, and all the other people in there will hear the French. Or right. it would type out in the French language exactly. inside the chat room so I could communicate with these people. Exactly. All right, now I see you have a games option up here. We won't get around to that right now, but speak and talk. This is what really intrigues me because the dream is that if I don't know French, I can speak in English, and some machine will instantly speak that in French. Exactly. That's what this will do? That's what this will do. All right, show me how. Okay, we're going to open up our dictation. Let's do some dictation. Good morning, period. How are you? Question mark. My name is Robbie, period. Now you can speak English and hear French, period. Translate and speak. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Le matin comme Rabbi. Il peut maintenant parler en français. So Rabbi, your little robot, just said that in French, what you mm -hmm. had just said in English. Exactly. And it, it happened just in a couple of seconds. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the typical situation. I, now, this is, I, I take it you could say anything, right? Not exactly. Just this little perfect, here's another perfect example. Go ahead. Dictate. Dictate. Where is the toilet? Question mark. Where's the toilet? Question mark. Getting there. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you might end up in an embarrassing situation there. Try it again. Period. Where's the toilet? Question mark. Try it again. Period. Where's the toilet? Question mark. All right. Translate and speak. There you go. So I guess eventually what happens is after you speak three or four times, someone might understand you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you wouldn't get anywhere if you didn't understand the language at all. We know in the speech recognition stuff, it's very delicate, and it takes training, and it takes time. This is sketchy, you know, cutting-edge technology. But the fact is, uh, you could, I mean, I assume one day this will be, you know, a little Palm Pilot on my belt. 
Absolutely. Right? And I've got the software in there, and I could be, you're saying I could be walking down the street of Paris, I find some gendarme, a policeman, mm -hmm. and I can say to him, hey, where is the closest subway station or whatever? Exactly. And, and the little speaker on my pilot says to him in French, where is the closest exactly. subway station? Exactly. Um, French, German, Spanish, Italian, other languages are coming out, uh, Japanese, Chinese, something that maybe a language you can never understand or never be able to have the time to learn, we'll be able to do that with the Instant Language Series. All right, now, let me ask you the bottom line question here. We see these things at Comdex and at trade shows, and it always mm -hmm. seems to work very well, but we know this is difficult stuff, and there is a reliability question. Is it at the point where, I mean, you can really use this stuff, or is it really still in the pre-experimental stage? I would say that at the moment, um, the key point behind this is to communicate. For example, you may not know French, or I, know, I only speak French, I want to communicate right. to you. Um, the whole idea is to communicate. Now, translations may not be perfect, but we're not writing a thesis here. Okay. We want to communicate. And we get the basic idea across. Eventually, exactly. it went from portrait to toilet. We figured it out. Eventually, yes. Blaine, thank you very much. Well, Comdex is about more than just products. It's a chance to hear the latest gospel, according to Gates, or Ellison, or Pfeiffer. The keynote speeches are a big part of every fall comdex, so we thought we'd give you a little taste of the conference side of America's biggest computer trade show. Rome wasn't built in a day, but the virtual city that is Comdex Las Vegas was built in just a few days, and most of the big industry players were present, even if some companies shunned the exhibit floor. Microsoft was hard to miss, and this year, Windows CE and portable computing devices took center stage, as did CEO Bill Gates. In addition to the PC itself improving, there will be lots of smaller devices that we call personal companions that allow you to review information in a pocket-sized device that's connected up through a wireless network. These are improving rapidly, and we expect that the volumes will be even greater than the PC itself. Microsoft also introduced a technology to improve text quality on LCD screens called ClearType. One thing I'll be showing is the breakthrough called ClearType, which makes it possible to read text off of a flat screen that's very high quality. This has been one of the key missing elements for electronic books for reading off screens. Compact Computer skipped the show floor, but Compact's chairman, Eckhart Pfeiffer, presented a keynote speech announcing a speed boost for Internet users. Compact is announcing a Internet PC for the consumer with broadband capability. The consumer will be able to access the Internet much, much faster than ever before, actually 25 times faster. That is called the uh, ADSL technology, but there are other alternatives in the future. One is via the cable and the other one is via satellite. The Presario 5100C with broadband access will be available in early 1999 for about $1,600. Compaq also demonstrated an amusing program that creates three-dimensional, animated talking heads. As I was saying, what Faceworks allows you to do is to convert a two-dimensional image into a 3D talking face. When played back, the face synchronizes to real speech, as you can see. Xerox used this year's Comdex to tantalize the audience with some fascinating ideas that seemed at first glance to be science fiction. But Xerox chief scientist, John C. Lee Brown, promised paper and even staples with electronic memories in the near future. What would it be to build a new kind of paper document that was truly erasable? and can be rewritten as many times as you want. Yes, that is possible. Let me show you, first of all, the pulp of the future. These are bichromal balls. Each ball, half white, half black. You embed this in a sheet of paper, as a sheet of paper, put an electric field over this, and these balls rotate. It is a bistable system, so they rotate to the black or the white and stay stuck until they get hit by another charge. Mm -hmm. In fact, here is a piece of this paper that has yet to be written on. Now, what would you do with this paper? Let me give you just a couple of examples. Consider the possibility <clears throat> of pulling out this piece of paper, pulling out a wireless fax machine, and of course, this paper you can wrap up, fold it in your pocket, unfold it, and all you have to do is 
pull this thing across the page. And what happens? <laughs> Let me give you a slightly more extreme example. We've been exploring the notion of staples, smart staples that can identify the document for you. Let me give you an example. Here is a new kind of a staple that basically is RF sensitive. So you blast it with a RF beam. And what happens is that this staple generates an HTTP address. So basically, consider now a printer that prints out one page of the entire document. You put this staple on it. And now, walk up to a new type of monitor. And all you have to do is to wave this document in front of the monitor and it instantly knows where to go to the web to pull up the document. Pull it up so you could see other people's annotations, pull it up to see if you have the most recent version of the document, and so on and so forth. Bridging, bridging very carefully the paper and the digital world. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. One of the themes at Comdex was the emergence of information appliances, mobile computing, and application-specific devices. Perhaps the best example at Comdex in this category was the amazing C-Pen from a Swedish company called C-Technology. And Johan, thank you for coming all the way from Sweden to demonstrate this for us. Thank you. This is the C-Pen here, and it is really quite amazing. Lots of folks were talking yes, about this thing. First of all, tell us what is inside this tiny thing. Inside, there is a digital camera, a strong arm processor, and an eight megabyte of memory. And what speed was a hundred megahertz processor? That's, that's correct. This is a little computer. Exactly. It's got memory, it's got a CPU, and its input is a digital camera. Exactly. Now, it's really show, amazing. you've got an LCD screen for output. Just show us what you can do, how you set this thing sure. up. Sure. With this navigation control, which it's kind of like, like what you do with a cell turn. phone. Exactly. You, you press Swedish guys turn. know how to make cell phones. Very oh, well, yeah. Actually. And here there are different settings. If you want to read English or Swedish text, just pick that up. All right, so I can set it up now. What do I do with this thing? You read text, for example, you go to the library where you can't really tear out pages. So you just scan All right, so the I text. go to the library, there's this book, and I really need a couple of paragraphs here for a mm -hmm. report I'm doing. I can't take the book out of the library. No. I really want to rip the page out. No. I'm kind of stuck. I don't want to sit there and write it all. I didn't bring my laptop. I can That's actually right. now take the stuff home with me inside yeah. the C-Pen. Is that the deal? That's perfect. Show me, let's use that as an example oh, rather yeah. than the book, and show me how you do it. Yeah, simply drag the C-Pen over the text like this. And this is not a scanner. You're actually taking a digital photograph of the words. Is that right? That's right. And then processing it and OCRing yeah. it inside image, that? Yeah, Im image processing and OCR processing inside here. OK, so you, and you scan one line at a time. Yeah. You have to be real careful, I mean, to do it perfectly? No, you can strake a little. The image processing would correct that. Sort of that. clean that up inside inside that little inside thing? Inside here. Nothing is on so the So once computer. it leaves here, it's finished, it's OCR'd, it's translated. Yeah. Let me show you one more time here. Okay. So again, you're just scanning the lines yeah. on that. How much can I scan? How much can I get in that? 3,000 pages. 3,000 yeah. pages. So you've That's got right. 8 megabytes of memory in mm -hmm. there. That's correct. All right. So I've been in the library. I've scanned my 3,000 pages. Yeah. First of all, how do I know it's, it's safely in here? Can I actually look at the text on that yes. screen and say, yes, I've really got it? Yeah, you can look at it right So there. let's hold it up here. Okay. So that's the actual text that we just scanned in. So I Correct. come home and say, I really do know I've mm -hmm. got the material I need. So you can even edit the files within the CPAN. Oh, I decided I didn't want that paragraph. I can just delete it. Mm -hmm. All right, I come home, and now I want to work this stuff in my word processor because I'm going to take this stuff and put it inside a report yeah. I'm working on. How do I do that? Just connect to your PC with the infrared receiver. So I just point it at the IR. Yeah, and, and you know. find the CPAN here. And notes, that's where you store the files. Mm -hmm. And here, this is what we scanned right now. And then you click on it. And it's now basically transferring a file from the C-Pen to the PC. That's correct. So this is just treating this like another drive or something, huh? Perfectly, yeah. All right, is that, is that what's happening? No, that's what's happening right now. Here it is. And that's what you just scanned in? Mm -hmm. All right, now what is the, what is the status of, of this product? Is it for sale now? It's for sale in Sweden and Europe, but it will come to the U.S. late April. All right, so you told me about the memory. I can do 3,000 pages. What about the battery situation? Is it an internal rechargeable battery? It's internal rechargeable battery. will last for two weeks of normal use. 
And what's it going to cost, you think, when you sell it here? It's going to be five ninety nine, not including VAT or oh, well, taxes and whatever that yeah. those problems may, may be. Uh, and do you see applying this technology other places? I mean, this is your proprietary technology. This way you have a photographing and interpreting. Yeah, that's right. In the future, there might be more applications. As this is a computer, as it is itself, yeah. you can do what almost anything you can think of. It's going to become part of a cell phone, I can tell. Maybe. <laughs> all right, Johan, thank you very much. Well, you've all heard of convergence, the coming together of computers and video. Well, for the consumer, convergence has taken a while due to massive hard drive demands and clunky user interfaces. That seems to be coming to an end with Avid's Cinema for Windows. And Terry, you're with Avid. If people don't know, if you're not in the television business, Avid is like the god name. I mean, this is the Kleenex or the Scotch tape. I mean, this is mm -hmm. the standard for doing high-end professional digital uh, uh, nonlinear editing. Mm -hmm. So we know Avid, but a lot of normal people in the consumer world may not know that Avid is really high-end stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing this kind of capability down to the consumer now? Yep, that's right. Avid's traditionally had its roots in high-end professional systems that were used on TV episodes, I mean, commercials. Systems. Right, right, very expensive. And we have corporate, and now we're coming down into the consumer market, so we're hoping to bring the fun of editing and special effects to the right. consumer. So the nightmare is we all have camcorders and we shoot these endless hours of boring <laughs> stuff about our kids and nobody mm -hmm. wants to watch them because we can't really edit them in an easy way. And you're mm -hmm. saying I can now edit all on my PC. That's right. Lots of people have home PCs and they have camcorders, but they don't realize that Avid Cinema could be the glue that kind of helps so, edit out the bad stuff. So this shots is real digital nonlinear editing at home on my PC. Right. All right, show us right? how you do it. What's Great. the storyboard part? Um, the um, Avid Cinema product has four main areas. Storyboards are what the uh, professionals use and now the consumers can use to um, basically organize their thoughts before they go do a video. Here are event. the kinds of shots I really want. Here's the right. story I want to tell, which we don't tend to do as camera right. operators. That's right. And for people that are extremely new to Avid Cinema or to videography in general, we provide a bunch of storyboard so templates. Templates give me an idea what I should shoot to make a good Right, for right, homeschool so, or office. All right, so let's get past the storyboard part. I've mm -hmm. decided what I want to shoot. I go out in the field. I've shot my video. Now mm -hmm. what do I do? Right, so we have an example here of some soccer footage. Um, or we just shot some stuff with we, your little camcorder in the right. studio here. So, so just so we can see what a typical user would do is they'd, they'd go out, they'd go ahead and roll the footage on their camcorder and as easy as record and stop, we would capture the video clips directly right, to so the disc. Hit play and basically transfer this to my hard drive. That's I do need right. some sort of video capture card to That's do that. That's right. right. The PC has a video capture card in the back. And well, you it connect. may, but if it doesn't, I got to get one of those. Right. All right. Let's go to the next step. I brought the video in now. Let's go back to our soccer game, if we okay. could. You have an example of stuff you've already done, the more typical camcorder kinds of things. How do I actually edit the stuff now using this interface? Right. Well, once we've captured our footage, we can do just as you would with word processing basic editing um, techniques that you would do with video. So we could do, for instance, if I played through the shot. So that's one sequence I would have shot? That's right. And what we could do is maybe trim that up so that the goal ends right about when trim the Trim means the, the sequence is going to be a little shorter a little now. Bit shorter. Or I could lengthen that sequence. Yep. That's How do right. I actually drop down the sequences on your timeline and say I want this shot, then that shot, then that shot? As the footage gets recorded to the um, disk drive, it gets stored in something called the library. So and on the right, that's my sort of log of shots I have? That's right. So and I you just can actually drag, drag and, drop and drop it. And go ahead and play through footage that we've just captured. And this is coming off my hard drive now, This not is off the exactly camera. off the hard drive. And if I wanted right. to change the order of shots, I just lift them and move them over it's on the timeline? It's as time easy line. as uh, holding on to the shot and moving it anywhere you want on the timeline. Maybe I want this at the beginning of my movie. And just drop it in. Now, how do I define the transitions between shots? I want a little sexy dissolve or a wipe mm -hmm. or something. We have something in Avid Cinema called a variety of effects, mm -hmm. transition effects. So if we wanted to pick, for example, your uh, dissolve, we could go ahead and very quickly apply the dissolve in between those two scenes. So you would drop that onto those the, the line between the two shots and said, that's how I want you to get yep. from shot A to shot B. That's right. So we'll go ahead and we'll see this very subtle All dissolve right. in between. And we can do other things like adding titles and sound. Um, so what's a, a movie without a music track? So we can go ahead and play some dramatic music with our dissolve. So those four little things at the bottom here, that's your video clips, the, tr the, the uh, Titles you're going to add, yep. the narration you might add, That's and, and music underneath. And right. You do all, mix all those four things together. And then when you're through, you can save that back out to videotape. Okay, or so I can dump it back into my camcorder so I can now play it on a tape for people and, and carry it around with me? You could connect your VCR uh, to the, the okay. video out device and go ahead and make a, a videotape. Or 
you can actually save that movie that you've just done um, to CD-ROM. So if I have a recordable CD-ROM, I could put it on a CD, that's make it an correct. AVI file, put it out on a website? Yep, that's correct. Store it in a variety of formats. Dynamite. Yep. How so, much does it cost? Uh, it retails at $139. Avid similar for Windows. Jerry, thank you. Great, thank All you. right, that's our look at the best of Comdex. I'll be back in just a minute with my pick of the week. Now for my pick of the week. Online shopping or e-commerce is getting lots of attention on the internet these days, and it was at Comdex, but what we're all waiting for is the ability to really try out a product online. That takes interactive 3D technology, and I think we found it at Comdex in the new Colt 3D software from SciCore Computers. This is a web plugin that lets you actually examine a 3D object on the web and use it in a virtual reality environment. For example, if you are looking at a new watch online, but before you click to put it in your shopping basket, you want to know what the buttons actually do, how hard it is to change the time settings. With a Cult 3D image, you can actually interact with the object on the web page. Cult 3D is not VRML. SciCore claims its technology offers better quality objects than is possible with the older VRML protocol. Cult 3D objects can be easily embedded into any HTML page and viewed with a standard browser. SciCore also offers an exporter, which lets you convert standard 3D objects from other graphics programs and turn them into Cult 3D objects. This is one piece of software which may not only give a big boost to online shopping, but also improve web-based education and online gaming. That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the latest on the Internet, new hardware and software. Thanks for joining us. I hope we'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, video telephony on the Internet. We'll show you the hottest thing in online chats, powwow, which lets you talk, not just type. You'll see how you can go to school online using video telephony, We'll meet Stephanie, who uses internet video to live her life online with a live webcam. And if you're a bit of an exhibitionist, we'll show you how to set up your own webcam. Then we'll demo some new video telephony software that guarantees no lost packets. It's all coming up next week on the Computer Chronicles.